We're the Breaker Leggers at Mac Birmingham. And we're here to see the opera up close production of La Boheme, which is about to embark on a UK tour. So stay tuned to find out how many legs. Whether it's break a leg or, or leg it. <laughs> So Birmingham has a number of theatrical spaces. You've got the Alexandra Theatre, the Hippodrome, the Birmingham Rep, which also has three spaces. Uh, and we are at Mac Birmingham. What does Mac stand for? So Mac stands for Midlands Arts Centre. It really is kind of a combination of multifunctional spaces here from an art gallery, cafe and performance spaces as well, including a main theatre space and smaller studio spaces. So there's lots of different opportunities to see a variety of productions in this, uh, in this space. Here in Birmingham. And what space are we in this evening? We're in the main theatre space this evening to see La Boheme itself. So, first time for me in this theatre space. How about you? Same for me, first time in this space. We've been to the studio space before. Uh, first time for me for this um, piece as well, La Boheme. I think, am I right in saying in 2011 it won the Olivier Award? In 2011 it won the, it won the Olivier Award. 11? Yes, it won the Olivier Award for Best Opera Production. Okay, so let's see what this piece has in store for us. So we've come to the end of the second act of La Boheme at Mac Birmingham. How are you finding it? I wasn't sure to begin with, to be honest. We were sat in the theatre and it was playing out like a regular performance piece in a theatre space. I uh, was had a few issues with this juxtaposition of the modern setting and the modern text translation into English of La Boheme, yet sang in the operatic style, which to me feels quintessentially Italian, but then to have this English language come out, it was a bit strange, a bit jarring. Um, so yeah, the first act for me wasn't too sure about, about you. First act, um, it's been modernised, so it's set in the last decade, so it's nice to have some modern references kind of set in a student apartment, um, so that's nice and familiar. Um, outside of that, I don't think opera is very appealing to me, it's just kind of like speaking, but really long and strung out to music, so there's nothing quite musically indulging for me. Pacini's score is being played on a single piano, so it doesn't have the richness of a full orchestra. It's very much a lightness of touch when it comes to the musical aspect of this, really relying on the voices of the performers, which by and large are good. Yes, and that was the first act, at which the end of, we were then kind of ushered out of the auditorium um, with an announcement from a member of stage crew saying that they had to reset the stage for the second act. So we were ushered into the foyer. And then, um, upon being told to go and wait in the bar area, the actors came out on stage and performed the second act in the bar space. In the foyer, with a lot of audience participation as well. The character Musetta actually came out and uh, was interacting with me, stroking my hair. She um, was taking um, bits of garments from um, people down in the bar and kind of flirting with them. So it was um, very interactive. Yeah, it's just become a totally different piece. It's now become a piece of immersive theatre. Started off as a traditional production and now has become something totally different. It's kind of thrown me at the moment. I don't really know how to feel about it. Um, I think it's a great use of surprise being led into this full sense of security as you're sat in your seat and you're going to watch a show to be then taken out of that environment, thrown into an unfamiliar surrounding and then have people singing in your face. Really interesting dynamic. I, I would say interesting so far as, as a concept, as a production. Um, definitely steps it up a level from a traditional opera which for me, as Nathan said, I, you know, is probably not that greatly appealing but now I'm seeing what I feel is more of a artistic endeavour as opposed to just a staging and production of La Boheme. So interested to see what's coming up. Yeah, the concept does um, change it does make it much more um, interesting. Um, if they have more of that in the next two acts, then it could be quite interesting. It was very engaging. Um, so more of that, we could be on an up and up. Stay tuned and we'll let you know what we think when we come to the end of the show. So we've come to the end of Labo M, um, the second half, which comprised of acts three and four. How did you find that? It was okay. Okay, um, just okay? Yeah, just okay. 
as an introduction to opera. I've never seen an opera done in a traditional setting in a Italian language. Um, it was uh, had potential. There, I think it peaked with this idea of bringing it out of the theatre, the traditional theatre setting, and setting it amongst people and and it, you know and it can making it more of an interactive experience. But unfortunately, I only lasted a scene, and it, nothing else was really brought out into the audience or made it any more kind of dynamic than a staging of an opera in English in a modern setting. I agree. Uh, the second act was as good as it got. Come act three, there was kind of nothing going on. Act four got a little bit more exciting. They introduced a, a Brexit gag in there, so very modern, and also a bit of Strictly Come Dancing when they go um, kind of prance around the stage. Um, but as a piece of opera that um, I'm kind of new to, unless you're interested in a celebration of pitch in terms of going up and down the octaves, uh, tone, some nice tone from nice baritone bassy singers, a celebration of vowels, uh, and a celebration of vibrato. Apart from that, there's just not much to it. Um, something that struck me as well is that there's no rhymes. In opera, this is literally a combination of words put together. At least with the musical, it has a rhyme that you're kind of working towards, you're going to. With this, it's just text. It's not even words and music. Yeah, it's not even. Words. It's not even good text. It's not like Shakespeare with prose and rhymes and kind of, or even a Sondheim with intellect and wit. It's just words. I think if they were to maybe turn it into a musical, maybe set it in the early mid '90s, maybe backdrop of AIDS, backdrop maybe? with a, the AIDS crisis, maybe in New York. Yeah, that might maybe be a good. Maybe a bit thing. LGBT. Maybe some characters then, gay. Then who knows? You might have a show. <laughs> you might have a hit. But, you might run and run. <laughs> but for this, for us, not so much. So. How many legs are we going to give Lab OM, the Opera Up Close production currently touring the UK? We would like to give two, two. two legs for Lab OM. Uh, some nice performances, kind of, you know, an opportunity to hear some nice voices. A really great dynamic with bringing it out of the theatre and taking it into a shared space and having the action in your face, but something that isn't isn't maintained throughout the piece and isn't revisited after the second scene. The cast is great, the cast are very capable, fantastic singers, put their all into it, but I think unless opera is your thing, if you know La Boheme, then maybe you'd be interested in seeing it done in a modern setting, set now um, and in English, but if not, then you may not enjoy this as much. So yeah, if it's coming nearby you and you're something a bit different, then maybe, but don't go out of your way. We're the Breaker Leggers and we'll catch you again soon. Bye!